Hey there everyone. Today we're going to go over three codeless flows to replace scripted scheduled jobs. And we're going to take this and convert it into this. And I get it. Some of you aren't exactly the type that embrace change. Change. I don't like when things change. Our first flow will send a notification to the incident assigned to after one week of creation if it's still open. We'll see here that the trigger is daily and it enables the flow to run every day at 4 a.m. Now we'll scroll down to the actions. One thing to note when we go into actions, we're going to want to type in lookup records or just look and that will bring it up under the third selection there. Now what we'll see here is our conditions. Basically, we're confining it to between seven days ago and 14 days. And the reason why is because we'll have another flow that runs for anything older than 14 days. Also, we'll notice that the state is not resolved, canceled, or closed. Now we're gonna add a little flow logic called for each item in, or for each, which you'll see there. And we're gonna drag the number one pill into the item slot for each item in. I'm going to delete this one because we're not gonna need it, but I wanted to show you how to recreate it. Now, if you're in Quebec, good news. There's an action called send notification in which you can call a notification, such as incident reminder, which I created. Now you'll notice that there are only two selections, why? When we go to the notification itself, so we'll go to notifications and then inside the notification you'll see here send when triggered so anything that has triggered in the send when box will appear in flow designer we'll also notice that i have the assigned to in the users groups and fields and send to event creator checked now we can do a notification preview and see that there are no users for the specific record so i'll change the record to see if indeed it's sending to the correct user which in this case it looks like it's doing that, which is great. Make sure you go back to the record if the notification doesn't fire and check the assigned to box for the solution. Now we're going to run a test and we'll notice here we can run a test in the background. This is something new to Quebec. I'll click on run test and then we'll take a look and see how this performed. We'll at first want to look in the send notification, but really that's not where we're gonna see the number of records that were affected. So the number was 29 there, that was a runtime value. And now we can make a copy of this flow if we want to, which is what I originally did. If you're not on Quebec yet, you're gonna have to use another method to trigger a notification because the send notification action is not in Quebec. I just wanted to show on the incident table a couple of the filters that I had created just to make sure that what we are triggering on is correct in terms of the conditions within the flow. As you can see here, the created dates are different. We'll come back to the flow. Now you'll see here I'm creating an event record and I put in two parameters and the name of the event. One thing to keep in mind is that we need to dot walk all the way down to the email of the manager and the assigned to for this specific requirement. Now I'm just going to recreate briefly the record. So we're going to select create record for our action. Then we'll find the sys event table. And then we'll add our fields. I created an event called second.reminder. So you can go out to your event registry and create one there and then fill in the parameters. Now notice how I dot walk parameter one. I'm gonna go down to the assigned to and then I'm gonna select the email field and I'm just gonna drag and drop the value in there. Then for parameter two, I need to find the assigned to's manager. So I'm gonna scroll up select the sign to and then I'm going to go find the manager Then I'm going to select the manager's email and drag and drop it. Once we're finished with this, the event will trigger and it will create an event on the event table, thus triggering the notification. Now we can go ahead and test the flow and we'll see here that our incidents have fired. We'll see three are ready.
Our third and final flow is how to auto close an incident. The action that we're going to implement is update multiple records. We'll see here a couple of the conditions. Things look re relatively similar. What we'll do is recreate the action so that way you have a better understanding of how to do it yourself. So I'm going to click on action, type in the word update. Update multiple records will be our second selection. I will add a table value of incident and then here we'll see our field values. And then we are going to change the state to resolved. You'll notice there along with the two other field values which are required when we resolve an incident. Now I'm gonna go back to incidents. I'm going to implement a filter which is more than 21 days old per our requirements. And we'll notice here we have all sorts of states, new, closed, etc. I'm going to run a test of the flow and then I'm going to navigate down to our runtime value, which is 38. Now to verify that this is the correct number, I'm going to filter out everything that was updated today. So just make sure you understand that when you run a test, you're actually running the real thing. And we'll see here, we have 38 records updated today. All of them have a state of result, so everything works.